Hi, welcome back to Anime Nut. Today I will be explaining the movie, Ghost in the Shell. Perched high overlooking the dystopian Newport City, Major Makoto surveys her targets. She has been tasked with the assassination of a foreign diplomat to prevent a programmer named Dida. The police raid the meeting between the diplomat and Dida and detains them. This creates an opening for Makoto, who expertly shoots her target in the head. The police open fire in retaliation, but she escapes using thermo-optic camouflage. The year is 2029. Advancements in cybernetics technology has allowed for the human body to be augmented or even completely replaced with cybernetic parts. With the magnum opus being the cyber brain, a mechanical for the human brain that allows access to the internet and other networks. Also termed a ghost, this refers to the consciousness inhabiting the shell, which is a complete cybernetic body. Makoto is one such creation and is an assault team leader for the public security section 9. Our Mickey, the chief of section 9, meets an official. They discuss the issue of programmers attempting to gain political asylum. The official thanks him for the successful assassination on behalf of the boss of section 6, Mr. Nakamura. Back at section 9, the team examined the foreign minister's interpreter. Her brain has been hacked through the phone line. From their intel, the main suspect is the puppet master who aims to sabotage an important meeting with the Gabo Republic. He is a hacker, presumed to be an American, wanted for a myriad of crimes, such as stock price and political manipulation. His calling card is ghost hacking the public and manipulating them, hence the name Puppet Master. Our Mickey orders Makoto to join Fatu and Ishwaka, or cause chasing trace points. She sets off with her subordinate, Taguska, the latest member of the team. This is a reminder to like and subscribe. Thank you for supporting anime content like this. While on the road, he is curious as to why she recruited him. It was because he is more human than anyone on the team. Since he doesn't have a ghost, this makes him less predictable, almost like a wild card. Meanwhile, two garbage men seem to be doing their normal pickup rounds. One of them is going through a divorce. Using the access terminals at their stops, he attempts to ghost hack his wife. The program was provided to him by a mysterious man who he met at a bar. Back to Ishwaka, sped past their suspects. They got an alert from the latest access terminal. They arrive, but meet no one there. However, a resident who is late with his rubbish alerts them that he saw one of the garbage men ringing someone on the terminal. With a new lead, they notify the Major, who confirms the correlation between the garbage truck route and the access points. She takes control of their car and orders Ishwaka to go to the rubbish man's house and tells Bata to go to the next pickup point. The divorced man shows his co-worker a picture of his daughter, but he doesn't seem interested. They are interrupted by a call from their office, informing them that they are being traced by the police. The culprit panics and skips to the next pickup point. Suspecting the hacker knows they're being tailed, Bata quickly pursues the truck. Makoto gives control of the car back to Tagusa as she also prepares for a confrontation. The garbage man tries to warn the guy who gave him the ghost hacking software of the situation. He notices the police and quickly shoots both of the trucks, causing them to crash. The Major and Tagusa quickly exit the vehicle before the man explodes the truck using high-velocity ammunition. As Batu arrives, he activates a thermo-optic camouflage to escape. He notices his outline against the background. Shooting at him, Bata pursues him on foot through the streets while Major follows him on the rooftops. The man removes his camouflage before reaching a clearing, thinking he is safe. Using her optical camouflage, Makoto sneaks up and incapacitates him. In close quarters combat, the team revealed to the man he's only a ghost-hacked Puppet. The garbage man whom he aided in the hacking is also being ghost hacked. He had no wife or daughter. It was false narrative concocted by the puppet master. Accompanied by Batu, the major goes scuba diving. They have a drink, but she can't get drunk since she is a cyborg. This leads to a deep conversation about what it means to be human. As they discuss, they hear a mysterious voice. One night, Megatech's production line suddenly started building a female cybernetic body without authorization. The body had already escaped from the facility before the factory personnel arrived. Naked while roaming the highway in the rain, the cyborg is hit by a truck. Section 9 now has the body in their custody as they attempt to determine why it was built. While briefing, the Major Batu also reveals that strangely, the shell has no brain but still appears to be a ghost within it. This goes as the characteristics of one that has been copied. Although it doesn't show any degradation of information, which is normally a side effect, Megatech manufactures and maintains the bodies 
for Section 9 cyborgs. This hacking situation has put them on edge. Armiki instructs Tagusa to join Ishwaka on site to investigate. He asks Batu to double check that their networks are still secure. Makoto expresses her desire to dive into the unknown body to see what's inside. The chief notices something is off about his major. Batu says he has already expressed the same sentiment in his report. Armiki would know this if he read his reports. Makoto seems to be having doubts about her existence. Mr. Nakamura, chief of section 6, along with Dr. Willis, visit Armiki to retrieve the rogue cyborg and relieve section 9 of the case. These are orders of the foreign minister. They are presented with the body. Dr. Willis analyzes inhabiting the cybernetic shell. While the two chiefs discuss formalities of the body retrieval, he confirms that the ghost in the shell is in fact the puppet master. Nakamura states that they had Section 6 have been tracking him since his first appearance. They lured him into secret cybernetic body, killing the real body. The operation was in conjunction with the USA, which explains Dr. Willis's presence. Armiki shows concern that the original body will just be left to rot. The cyborg takes control of the room, alerting the Section 9 chief that there was never a body and that he drove in this body by his own volition. Claiming to be a sentient being, the program requests for political asylum from Section 9. Nakamura protects the idea that the puppet master emphasizes about being a sentient entity, not an AI. It was created through the accumulation of data and the flow of information known as Project 2.5.0.1. Meanwhile, Tagusa in the underground garage notices that two officials came in by themselves. They look like they are the type to get chaperoned the video feed they enter the facility by themselves. He observes that the door took an extra three seconds to close, which is unusual since the door are highly sensitive. This confirms his suspicion that the two beings accompanied by the agents using optic camouflage, which is illegal. He quickly informs his team members of the situation. Before they can react, the camouflaged agents call an explosive distraction, giving them the chance to snatch the body. Tagusa shoots the car with a tracker before they can escape. Batu immediately starts following the car. Nakamura and Dr. Willis quickly leave the scene, requesting that Section 9 find the Puppet Master and report back to him. Makoto updates the chief of her suspicion of Section 6's involvement in Project 2501. She also prepares to pursue the kidnappers via helicopter. He instructs her to destroy the Puppet Master if she is unable to to recapture him. Section 6's involvement is confirmed to us as Nakamura and the Doctor discuss the securing of the body and its current position. Ishwaka provides Amiki with a more information after further investigation of Project 2501. It turns out that the project precedes the Puppet Master. This contradicts the narrative put forward by Section 6 that it was created to capture the Puppet Master. Dida was also connected to the project, which is why Section 6 were serious about preventing him from defecting. Ishwaka suggests that the Puppet Master was a tool created by Section 6 to do their dirty political work. The escape of their asset would be a threat to Section 6 and the Ministry as their secrets would get leaked out to the public. This is why they had gone to such extremes to retrieve the Puppet Master. The getaway car makes contact with a white sedan where they transfer something to the white car, concluding that one must be a dummy. Batu continues to tail the original car. Major tracks the white sedan with the help of roadblock and back up. Batu stops the original car only to discover that it is a decoy. He rushes to provide support for Makoto. Meanwhile, she follows the car to an abandoned building. She infiltrates the building, but she's faced with a large spider-like tank called Fujikuma. The Major launches an attack on the tank, but her rounds can't penetrate the tank's armor. She uses her thermo-optic camouflage to get to the top of the tank, trying to rip its cover off. However, she ends up ripping her own arms and legs due to the tension. The tank grabs her ready to deal the final blow when Batu arrives and destroys the tank with a heavy weaponry. On Makoto's orders, Batu connects her to the Puppet Master for a dive. He also connects himself so that he can disconnect them if it gets too risky. The two ghosts contact each other. The Puppet Master explains to the Major how he was created by Section 6 through the illegal Project 2501. During his time collecting data and wandering different networks, he became sentient and began to contemplate his existence. He came to the conclusion that existence of life is reproducing and mortality. The scientists of the project saw this as a bug and tried to contain the program in his current body. Throughout his time in the network, he also noticed Makoto's battle with the same 
18 months up. He was the mysterious voice they heard that night. He proposes both him and the Major should merge their ghosts to fulfill his desire. She would also gain his capabilities. Opposed to this, Batu tries to disconnect them. The Puppet Master hacks into him, preventing the disconnection. After some contemplation, she decides to merge. Mounted on helicopters, snipers from Section 6 descend on the building. Opening fire on the two cyborg bodies, they aim to cover up all evidence related to the Project 2501. Their shots destroy the Puppet Master's body. Batu shields Makoto's head just in time, saving her brain. The last thing she sees is her team member rush to her before she blacks out. Makoto wakes up in Batu's safe house with her head attached to a cyborg child's body. He informs her that the foreign ministers resigned because of the conspiracy. Nakamura is currently in custody. Being questioned with the newfound freedom, Makoto decides to leave and reveals to Bata that she is neither the major or the Puppet Master. She is a combination of the two. They decide to set the secret password 2501 for when they meet again. Thank you for watching. Comment what you think down below. We read them all. Remember to like this video and subscribe for more anime content.